Hey there, Sam. Let's learn how to create an infinite scrolling effect on our website. So I've got a collection of pictures here, and as soon as I scroll to the end of the page, there seems to be no ending, and more and more pictures are added to the DOM. And that is what we're going to do in this lesson. Let's dive into the code right away. First of all, let's set up the structure of our HTML. We'll create a main element, and this is where we'll put in all the images. So the idea is we'll put the images in a group of four. And for each group, we'll have a class of container where we'll use Flexbox to align the images. We'll set the flex direction to row and flex wrap to wrap, which means the item will break into a new line when there's not enough space. So flex flow is a shorthand for flex direction and flex wrap. Next, we'll set align items to center to center the items vertically and justify content to center to center the item horizontally. And next, we'll style the images inside the container. We'll give each image a flex unit of 1, so they all occupy the same width and a flex basis of 21%, which means the minimum width of 21%. And also set the margin to 10 pixel to give some space around the images. Now that it's all set up, we can now start writing our JavaScript. First thing first, we'll write down our story. So the story is quite simple. When we scroll the page, we need to check whether the scrolled position is greater or equal to the total page height. If yes, then we will need to append a picture group to the DOM. Now to do that, first we need to listen to the scroll event on the DOM. We can get the amount of pixel that has been scrolled by the user from the window scroll Y property. As you can see, as soon as I scroll the page, the Y position got console log out, which corresponds to the amount that I have scrolled. And to get the height of the page, we can get it from the document elements scroll height property. Now we also need the viewport height to calculate whether the user has scrolled to the end of the page. The viewport height is a constant, and we don't need to calculate it every time the page is scrolled. So we'll put it outside the event listener, and the value of it will be equal to the client height of the document element, as we discussed in a previous video. And now, to check whether we have scrolled to the end, we need to check if the sum of scrolled y plus viewport height, which represents the scroll bar, is greater or equal to the page height. Let's console log this value to make sure it's working. As soon as we scroll to the end, we get true, which is great. Next, we need to append the picture group to the DOM when we have reached the end of the page. Let's create a function to create the picture group. We'll make multiple helper functions to divide the workload. We'll create a function called create container, which will just simply return a section with the class container in it. And another function to create the image element inside a container. This function will set an argument, which will be the image source URL. And the function will just create an image element with the source attribute set to the argument and a width attribute set to 200 pixel. Now every image in a container should be random. So I have selected a few images from Unsplash and created an array out of them. We'll then create a helper function to fetch a random element from this array by using the combination of math random and math flow as we have seen before in a previous video. And now we'll use the all this helper function to create our picture row. We'll create a new function create picture row, and in that, we first create a container using our create container function. Then we need four images per row. We can use a for loop to loop for four times, and in each loop, we'll create an image element and append it to the section we just created. And then we'll return the section as a whole as the result of this function. And now let's initialize our page with five rows of image groups. Again, we'll use a for loop, and in each loop, we will append the picture row to the main element. Let's store the main element as a variable, and inside the loop, we will call the append child function and pass in the result of correct picture row. Let's check the DOM. And we get five groups of pictures. The last piece of the puzzle is to append a row of picture when we scroll to the end of the page, which is just a matter of calling the append child function inside the if statement in our scroll event listener. Let's test the code. and it is working great. And one last note, if you want a smoother scrolling behavior, you can create a new row before the scroll bar reach the end of the page by subtracting some pixel away from the page height when we are doing the check. And that's it for this lesson. Key takeaway, we can get a scroll position from the window scroll Y property. Flexbox is a handy tool to easily set up the layout for us. That's it for this lesson, and I'll see you again shortly. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, 
subscribe and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.